The year was 1986, a year that would forever change the course of history for a quiet Ukrainian town. This town, nestled amidst pine forests and shimmering rivers, became synonymous with disaster. Chernobyl, a name that would echo through the annals of time as a stark reminder of the fragility of human endeavors. The name itself evokes chilling images of a nuclear nightmare, a testament to the devastating power of human error. The explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant released a cloud of radioactive particles into the atmosphere, spreading contamination far and wide. Yet from the ashes of this tragedy, a strange and unexpected story unfolds, a story of resilience, adaptation, and the enduring power of nature. It is a tale that defies the conventional narrative of desolation and despair. In the aftermath of the explosion, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, a sprawling area encompassing over 1,000 square miles, was deemed uninhabitable for humans. The land was left to the mercy of the elements, a silent witness to the catastrophe. The invisible hand of radiation had cast a long shadow, forcing evacuations and leaving behind a ghost town frozen in time. Buildings stood empty, streets were deserted, and an eerie silence pervaded the air. But while humans fled, nature, it seemed, had other plans. The absence of human activity created a unique opportunity for the natural world to reclaim its territory. Slowly, tentatively, life began to reclaim its dominion over the abandoned landscape. Plants, unfazed by the invisible threat, pushed through the cracked asphalt, their roots burrowing deep into the contaminated soil trees sprouted in the most unlikely places, and flowers bloomed amidst the ruins. The flora of the Chernobyl exclusion zone demonstrated an incredible resilience. Despite the radioactive soil, plants continued to grow, adapt, and even thrive. They absorbed the radiation, yet continued their life cycles a testament to the tenacity of nature. Animals, driven by instinct and the search for food and shelter, ventured back into the deserted villages and overgrown forests. Wolves, deer, and even rare species found a new home in this unintended sanctuary. Today the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone stands as an unparalleled testament to nature's remarkable ability to adapt and thrive, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. It is a living, breathing example of how life finds a way, no matter the odds. It's a living laboratory, offering scientists a unique glimpse into the complex interplay between radiation, evolution, and the resilience of life itself. Researchers from around the world come to study this unique environment, seeking to understand how life can persist and adapt in such extreme conditions. The findings from these studies have profound implications, not just for our understanding of radiation and its effects, but also for the broader questions of survival and adaptation in the face of environmental challenges. The lessons learned here could inform future responses to other ecological disasters, the Chernobyl exclusion zone, once a symbol of human failure, has transformed into an unlikely Eden. It is a place where nature has taken the reins, showing us that even in the most inhospitable conditions, life can endure and flourish. As the sun sets over the silent, overgrown ruins, one cannot help but marvel at the resilience of life. The story of Chernobyl is not just one of disaster, but also of hope, renewal, and the incredible power of nature to heal and regenerate. This unlikely Eden stands as a poignant reminder that, despite our mistakes, the natural world possesses an extraordinary capacity for recovery. It is a testament to the enduring spirit of life, a beacon of hope in a world often overshadowed by human error. And so, the story of Chernobyl continues to unfold, a living narrative of resilience and renewal, offering lessons for generations to come. Among the most striking examples of Chernobyl's wildlife resurgence, is the return of apex predators, those at the top of the food chain. These predators play a crucial role in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem, and their presence is a testament to the resilience of nature. Wolves, once hunted to near extinction in this region, have made a remarkable comeback, their haunting howls now echoing through the abandoned streets and silent forests. The eerie sound of their howls is a reminder of the wild reclaiming its territory, a stark contrast to the human absence that once dominated this landscape. With humans absent, the wolves found themselves presented with a unique opportunity, a vast, uncontested territory teeming with prey. This newfound freedom allowed them to roam and hunt without the threat of human interference, leading to a significant increase in their population. 
deer, elk, and wild boar, their populations also rebounding in the absence of human interference, provided a plentiful food source for the burgeoning wolf packs. These prey animals, thriving in the lush, overgrown forests and meadows, have created a balanced and sustainable food web that supports the wolves' resurgence. Researchers armed with camera traps and tracking devices have documented a thriving wolf population within the exclusion zone, with some estimates suggesting their numbers are seven times higher than in comparable reserves outside the zone. This data highlights the unique conditions of the exclusion zone that have allowed the wolves to flourish. These Chernobyl wolves, it seems, are not only surviving but flourishing in this radioactive landscape. Despite the potential dangers of radiation, the wolves have adapted and thrived, showcasing the incredible adaptability of wildlife in the face of adversity. Their presence has had a cascading effect on the entire ecosystem, helping to regulate prey populations and maintain a healthy balance within the food web. By controlling the numbers of deer, elk, and wild boar, the wolves prevent overgrazing and promote the growth of vegetation, which in turn supports a diverse range of other species. The wolves' return serves as a powerful symbol of nature's ability to heal and rewild itself when given the space and opportunity. It is a poignant reminder that even in the most unlikely and challenging environments, life finds a way to thrive and restore balance. The story of the Chernobyl wolves is not just about survival, it is about the resilience and tenacity of nature and the hope that, given time and space, ecosystems can recover and flourish once more. While the return of wolves stands as a testament to nature's resilience, their presence is just one piece of a much larger and more complex puzzle. The exclusion zone, a place once teeming with human life, has now become a living laboratory where nature and radiation intersect in ways that are both fascinating and terrifying. Whispers of more peculiar phenomena within the exclusion zone have captured the imagination of scientists and the public alike. These whispers are not just idle gossip, they are based on observations and studies that hint at the extraordinary ways in which life adapts to extreme conditions. The eerie landscape with its abandoned buildings and overgrown streets serves as a backdrop for these strange occurrences. Rumors of giant catfish patrolling the cooling ponds of the Chernobyl power plant, their bodies swollen to monstrous proportions, have circulated for years. These aquatic giants are said to thrive in the radioactive waters growing larger than their counterparts in non-contaminated environments. Whether these tales are true or exaggerated, they add to the mystique of the zone. Tales of abnormally large rodents, insects, and even mushrooms have become part of the local folklore, passed down from one generation to the next. These stories, while sometimes dismissed as mere myths, often have a kernel of truth that sparks curiosity and further investigation. The idea that radiation could cause such dramatic changes in size and form is both intriguing and unsettling. Fueling speculation about the potential impact of radiation on the growth and development of organisms within the zone these tales have led to numerous scientific expeditions aimed at uncovering the truth. Researchers have found that some species of mushrooms, for example, exhibit unusual growth patterns and increased resistance to radiation, suggesting that they have adapted in unique ways to their harsh environment. While some dismiss these accounts as mere exaggeration or urban legend, others believe they hint at a more profound truth, that radiation may be driving evolutionary changes at an accelerated pace. The concept of rapid evolution in response to extreme environmental stress is not new, but the exclusion zone provides a rare opportunity to observe it in real time. Scientists have observed instances of gigantism in certain plant species within the exclusion zone, with some trees displaying unusually rapid growth rates. These observations raise questions about the mechanisms behind such changes. Are these plants simply taking advantage of the lack of competition? or is radiation playing a more direct role in their accelerated growth? However, attributing these changes solely to radiation remains a complex and hotly debated topic. The effects of radiation on living organisms are multifaceted involving genetic mutations, changes in reproductive rates, and alterations in behavior. Scientists continue to study these phenomena, seeking to understand the balance between natural adaptation and radiation-induced changes. The truth, as is often the case, likely lies somewhere in between. While radiation undoubtedly poses risks to living organisms, it can also act as a selective pressure, potentially favoring individuals with mutations that confer a survival advantage in a contaminated environment. 
This delicate balance between danger and adaptation is what makes the exclusion zone such a compelling subject of study. While radiation undoubtedly poses risks to living organisms, it can also act as a selective pressure, potentially favoring individuals with mutations that confer a survival advantage in a contaminated environment. This selective pressure can lead to the emergence of new traits and behaviors that help organisms survive and even thrive in conditions that would be lethal to others. The exclusion zone with its unique combination of isolation and radiation offers a rare glimpse into the processes of evolution and adaptation in action. One of the most intriguing phenomena observed in Chernobyl's wildlife is the increased prevalence of melanism, a condition characterized by an overproduction of melanin, the pigment responsible for dark coloration. Scientists have documented a higher than average number of melanistic animals within the exclusion zone, including black frogs, dark feathered birds, and even partially melanistic wolves. While the exact mechanisms driving this phenomenon remain unclear, some researchers believe it may be linked to the protective effects of melanin against radiation. Melanin is known to absorb and dissipate certain types of radiation, potentially shielding cells from damage. In the case of Chernobyl's wildlife, melanism may be conferring a survival advantage, allowing individuals with darker coloration to better withstand the effects of chronic radiation exposure. This, in turn, could lead to a gradual increase in the frequency of melanistic traits within the population over time. The study of melanism in Chernobyl's animals provides a fascinating window into the complex interplay between genetics, environment, and the forces of natural selection. It highlights the remarkable adaptability of life and its ability to find ways to thrive, even in the most challenging of circumstances.